So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rope Hunter here again. And uh, look uh, what I found uh, in my refrigerator. This is uh, some fruit yogurt. I think it contains bananas, some, some jam. That's why there's the pink color. And uh, it was forgotten in the refrigerator for, yeah, a long time. <laughs> look, look, uh, it, there's, it's all moldy. The white stuff over here, that's not yogurt. That's actually fungus growing on the surface and the dark, gray dotted things. These seem to be the so-called the fruiting bodies containing the sporangia of the fungus. Uh, the fruiting bodies, they actually produce the spores. So what I would like, what I'd, I'd like to do today is, is I'd like uh, to put both, uh, yeah, the mycelia, that's the fuzzy white stuff, and also the spores, uh, which are formed by the fruiting bodies um, under the microscope. And I'd like to have a look at this. And I've got over here also some methylene blue um, solution to do a little bit of staining. So I'm just going to try it out um, just uh, for the fun of it. And uh, this way, uh, yeah, you can also know how to prepare microscopic uh, slides and specimens. So what I'll be doing first is, is um, I just want to uh, basically put both of them um, on the same slide. I'm going to simply add a little bit of water first. Um, yeah, so here, a drop of water and, and over here as well. And uh, let's put it away so I don't spill anything. And uh, now um, I'm going to simply take some of this uh, fuzzy stuff here on, on the side. And uh, okay. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to, uh, yeah, use a safe source of fungus, I recommend that you get some cheese. Okay, common bear cheese, for example, also contains, um, yeah, a lot of this white fuzzy stuff. Um, yeah, the hyphae, the mycelia. That is actually the main part of the fungus, and what the, what it does is it, it grows uh, in top. You now you can see it. Huh? I was covered up. Huh? Here it is. Huh? Yeah. Uh, basically, what happens is is the, those cells they grow into the medium and re they release enzymes, and uh, this way they digest the food. Okay. So I'm gonna put the cover glass on top. Yeah. I'm gonna press down a little bit to make it nice and flat. I'm going to now do the same thing uh, with the. Uh, the other side here and, and so let's see if i can if i'm able to let's, again let's move a little bit into the center here yeah let's move a little bit ah look doesn't even want to come off <laughs> okay let's try it again yeah, maybe i already have enough without i don't see it quite well okay, yeah i've got some fuzzy stuff here let's let's uh, try it Okay. Okay, I think uh, it's off now and uh, let's put the cover glass on top. Okay, I've got some problems picking it up. Okay, um, and everything goes under the microscope and let's uh, see if we are successful or not. Microscope of view is now, I need to turn up the light a little bit. Here we go. Okay, um, let's start off uh, with, the, with the spores. Okay, with the one that I just uh, did right now. It's up. Let me see, where is this? Here we go. I might have to refocus a little bit. Yeah, here we go. See? Yeah, that's uh, now using the 10 times objective. Some occasional air bubbles in there. Ah, uh, ah, look at this. Uh, could this be a one of these fruiting fruiting bodies? Or, uh, or yeah. And uh, basically, there are the, the spores uh, are formed in these round bulb-like structures and uh, then when they pop open and they release uh, those spores, here we go. Need to uh, need to make it a little bit brighter. That's like oh yeah, here here we go. Yeah. So the fruiting bodies uh, of a fungus that's usually the mushroom, and uh, yeah, and the sporangia can be found inside the fruiting bodies, and these are the structures that actually make those spores. Well, here here is a big one, big one. Okay. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, lots of yeah. Those round oval structures, of course, are the spores. Those big round structures here, these are air bubbles. Very nice. Okay, lots of spores, thousands of them, millions of them, maybe. Yeah, here and that's now basically where the yeah, that's the mycelium. Yeah, the mycelium. These are the cells that actually make up the main part of the fungus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when it's time to reproduce, uh, then the mycelia will produce uh, those structures here, which make uh, the spores. You know what, uh, just for the fun of it, let's go up a little bit with the magnification here. So this is now uh, 20 times um, 
40 times objective. I gotta go up with the light intensity a little bit here. Here we go. Uh, they look kind of different. I wonder why this is. Maybe it's a question of maturity that uh, maybe uh, some of them are not quite ready yet. Well, there seems to be some something flowing out here. Yeah. Could it also be because of the pressure of the cover glass. Yeah. Yeah, but that is uh, quite uh, quite nice to see here. Yeah. Yeah, spores are not healthy generally. Uh, some people kind of respond do respond quite allergically uh, to them. Um, however, those spores also um, are problematic because if they spread around, because if there's wind, for example, and in the refrigerator, then it spreads over to other foods, and then the other foods also become spoiled more quickly. Yeah. So for this reason, you always have to make sure that you remove um, any moldy food that you have as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, and another thing that's important to say is, is um, yeah, um, that uh, many of these fungi, they produce, of course, uh, poisons which are given off into the food. So um, I've uh, heard that some people like to scoop away the top surface um, where the mold is growing. And then they think that the food is fine, but I wouldn't do that. Because uh, the poisons, they can diffuse through um, all the way down into the food. And uh, you don't want to eat poisonous mushrooms, obviously, so you don't want to eat any poisons. Uh, um, that are produced by mold either because after after all mold um, is a fungus just like yeah, like the other like the edible ones so okay the density of spores here is not so high anymore um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move over um lower the magnification again a little bit i'm going to now move over to the other one the white fluffy stuff okay let's see what we have here okay uh here we go okay I need to also refocus a little bit here and the light intensity is a little too bright. Yep. So these are basically uh, the, 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 the mycelium. The mycelium, these are the long thread like cells that we see that you see here, which is actually the main part of the fungus. Look, look here. Um, it looks kind of strange because I think uh, there is not enough water in there. Yeah. So this is basically the edge uh, where the fungus touches the water. So I think uh, it's not a very good specimen because you see, um, there it's it's all air in here. So the the resolution is not quite quite nice. Yeah, there these uh, cells here are also in air. Okay, these are now in water. So I think so. I'm just gonna focus on this one. So I think this might already be a little bit of problem with staining, um, if uh, there's so much air in there. So from 20 to 40, again a little bit too dark. Let's go up a little bit here. Yeah. So basically, that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. If you look, uh, th th you can see that uh, it's also something very typical: the branching that you see over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, another thing that you can see is uh, that when you look into the cells, then you're able to see that there are little structures inside the cells as well. So in other words, so you can see some cell organelles. Yeah, yeah so this is basically um, how it looks like. It. And what, what these hyphae do is, is they're able to fuse together. And uh, then that's basically their form of... Uh, uh, sexual reproduction is um, is, is the hyphae fusing together and this is how DNA ex uh, DNA is mixed and then um, out of that you have uh, then the fruiting bodies emerging yeah so yeah so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to take this um, out again um, and I'm going to um, yeah uh, put a little bit of, of, of stain on it so some methylene blue so here we are again um, let me take it out so here we go yeah um, you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on a, a white tissue paper so it's easier for you to see okay and tissue paper also has the advantage that uh, it absorbs any any spills it might be still difficult to see for you because it's a little bit too bright so um this uh, Löffel solution it's called it's a, a ready to use methylene blue solution and i'm gonna put it here right on the edge and you can see that yeah it starts to diffuse in um, but um, of course it might take a little bit of time until um, yeah it has properly diffused and been absorbed so what i like to do now is, is um, to ensure that the mixing is a little bit better i usually carefully move the cover glass around yeah because this helps it uh, to mix um, as well 
And uh, yeah, um, and on the edge here, um, yeah, this is basically where the stain touches uh, the cells, and this is where I should be able to see the strongest uh, staining reaction. Um, but because I really want to play it safe, I do not want that any of the stain goes on my microscope objective. For this reason, I always use a little bit of tissue paper to remove any yeah excess excess that uh, might have yeah come out here because uh, yeah just for for safety reasons then let's go back uh, to the microscope view and let's see what we're able to find here yeah so this is again the ah uh, here we go see okay you can see that the cells uh, start uh, to stain blue and over here towards the center uh, it was not able to reach it yet yeah. but the cells here stain blue let's go up a little bit now it's uh, from 20 to 40. Yeah, here we go okay um so that's the advantage of methylene blue is it likes to stain um uh, pretty much anything <laughs> it's uh, also known as the microscopist stain because it's an easy to use general purpose stain that you can use huh? yeah i mean it's i think it's not necessary because uh uh, fungi are quite easy uh, to observe any anyway because uh, they generally have enough contrast anyway but still yeah yeah so um yeah let's have a look uh, maybe i should also try the staining reaction on the other one um where i've got only the spores let's see how that's uh, how that stains it's okay here we go again um so let's try the other one And yeah, it also slowly starts to diffuse in. Yeah, so let's uh, speed it up a little bit. Yeah, like this. And of course, I definitely have to remove uh, this one over here because. So, again, any excess has to be removed. And. I won't be using too high of a magnification anyway. So let's uh, let's give this here a try. So I need to go back to the microscope view. So let's have a look. I need to reach over. That's why I'm a little bit <laughs> yeah, off center here. Okay, so we, we've already seen this before. Okay. So now where is the stain? Can't find it. Ah, here, here, here it is. N not very. Well, I don't know. Here, not very, not very dark. Ah, look at this. It it does stain something else, some other. I don't know cellular debris, but it really doesn't seem to stain the. Um, the spores a lot. I've seen this already before. Yeah, yeah, and there is not a lot of stain here. Yeah, here it becomes more and more blue. Look here, that's uh, quite a lot, but it, it doesn't seem to stain the spores very well. Okay, um, and this is um, something that, um, yeah, is um, can be, yeah, for example, these uh, I don't know, debris, I think these are some cell parts, yeah, is stained, but not the spores. This is nothing unusual because uh, maybe the stain simply does not react with, uh, with uh, yeah, with the spores yeah. or maybe they're I don't know maybe the spores have a very um, impenetrable capsule or something around them yeah that makes it uh, not react so much but let's have a look here yeah you see ah <laughs> but that, that's interesting to see this here um, yeah it does turn uh, slightly blue so there is a little bit of stain here which is immediately uh, accumulated by uh, by the uh, by the fruiting body, but the spores themselves, they don't stain so much. So that's the reason why the fruiting body does turn a little bit bluish if you are able to see that. Yeah. So a little bit of the stain has already reached this, but uh, and that, ah, this one here as well, look. The spores don't stain, but the rest does. Okay, uh, here definitely it goes blue here, but not not the spores. Yeah, so that is uh, also a nice uh, thing, um, yeah, over here also um, to observe uh, to show a little bit that different structures, uh, yeah, respond differently to the different chemicals that you find in the different types of stains.
Yeah, I think I'm just uh, I'm going to leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope it was uh, reasonably interesting for you. Okay, here, that's the thing that I looked at. Um, and now I have to find a, a way of disposing of it because, um, yeah. yeah. It's not. It's not a good. It's not a nice, <laughs> a very nice sight. Yeah. So I just showed you now how to prepare um, some of these, uh, uh, yeah, mold and fungus and so on. Just be careful that when you do that, that you don't uh, spread around the spores too much. Um, yeah. But otherwise, I would say I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, I hope that you like these type of videos. Do consider subscribing if you do. Um, I do have a main channel as well um, where I'm also publishing videos, but this one here is a little bit uh, slower paced and a little bit more like a live stream type of uh, type of uh, atmosphere and i might actually be doing some live streams in the future as well um, i don't know exactly when i still have to think a little bit about that um, but yeah in any case uh, for today i think it's enough um, enjoy the day enjoy microscopy happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye